Welcome to InfoWars Nightly News, Patriot Edition. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in tonight for Alex Jones on this Wednesday, February 8th, 2012. We've got an amazing show coming up for you here. No, I'm not going to have these for the whole show. But look, we are patriots here, and we've got a lot of great patriotic, freedom-oriented news coming up for you tonight. We've got an interview with Kurt Linderman, Sr. He is a, the father of a vaccine-injured child. He's been a six-year activist trying to teach others about the dangers of vaccines. We've got a great interview with him coming up via Skype video. Also, we've got the TSA animation that will leave you rolling on the floor laughing. Trust me, don't blame me if you pull a muscle after watching this video with laughter. It's that good. It's coming up at the end of this show. We've also got a Ron Paul dollar bill to show you. And right here on the air, I'm going to commit an act of terrorism by paying for coffee with cash. Yes, indeed, all that and all the news is coming up right here on InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for tuning in. Now, leading off, we talked about that coffee situation. The FBI has now issued a series of posters that say it's a, a, an act of terrorism to pay for your coffee with cash. Now, that's just the poster that goes out to the coffee shops, and they warn about all kinds of things. And there's another poster that goes out to the Internet cafes that warns of the signs of terrorism like, oh, using an anonymizer or trying to protect your screen so that others can't see your password or searching on, whoa, whoa, radical websites. Gee, you mean websites that might be telling the truth about how the government is committing the, the terrorism? Here's some of the stuff that, that's in here. Well, here's a quote from it. The, the federal government, I'm sorry, this is a story on InfoWars by Paul Joseph Watson. The federal government routinely characterizes mundane behavior as extremist activity or a potential indicator of terrorist intent. As part of its See Something, Say Something campaign, the Department of Homeland Security has educated the public that generic activity is performed by millions of people every day, including using a video camera, talking to police officers, Oh, how dare you talk to officers uh, wearing hoodies, driving vans, writing on a piece of paper, and using a cell phone recording application. These are all signs of potential terrorist activity. Yes, so just to prove that, hey, how much, Darren, how much you want for that uh, latte over there? A buck fifty. A buck fifty. I'm getting a discount. Here you go. All right, how about two dollars in, in green Federal Reserve notes right there? Act of terrorism, folks. Act of terrorism. And I didn't even get my coffee. That's, <laughs> that's how bad it is. No, seriously. This is, this is now going to get you called, uh, the police called on you, to have you investigated for possible acts of terrorism. Some other things that they say are possible acts of terrorism include if you go to a military surplus store and you buy MREs, yeah, that's a sign you might be a terrorist. It's starting to sound like a Jeff Foxworthy comedy series. You know, you might be a redneck, those jokes. You might be a terrorist if you buy MREs. Well, why else would you go to a military surplus center except to buy some MREs and buy some ammo and buy some of the stuff you need to make it through the collapse that's coming because the Federal Reserve keeps printing this stuff down to, to the point where it's going to be valueless. So, of course, you need that anyway. I'm sorry, I don't mean to lose my temper, but this stuff drives me nuts. Uh, next story, feds label bulk buying of food a potential terrorist activity as well. Yeah, if you buy more food than you might need to survive through, let's say, a day, <laughs> then you must be, oh, stockpiling. And only crazy terrorists dare stockpile food. No, normal, rational people, they only have enough food to last for one meal because they're totally dependent on the system and on the grocery store and on the processed food providers and the junk food providers. All that food, of course, being laced with GMOs and toxic chemical uh, contaminants and other things that will make young men grow extra breasts because of the BPA that they're also packaged in. But that's another story. Um, <laughs> moving on. I, I, I'm sorry to laugh about all this, but it's just so insane. FBI, Communities Against Terrorism. This is now the full collection of the flyers that the FBI has issued, 25 of them, count them, 25 that tell you things like, what should I consider suspicious? Oh, well, people or groups who, quote, provide identification that is inconsistent with what they, oh, here we go, that's inconsistent or suspect, or they demand identity privacy, like, Oh, gee, I don't want to share my social security number with you because you might steal my identity 
that statement now makes you a possible terrorist. You know, this reminds me, I went to a bank one time, this is a few years ago, to open up a bank account, but I was concerned about this bank's security. So I asked some basic questions. I said, how do you make sure that the signer of the checks on my account, that that's really me? How do you make sure someone doesn't counterfeit my signature? You know what they told me? The fact that you're even asking that question means that you're a security risk and we don't want to open an account with you. Wow. So just asking basic questions, demanding your privacy now makes you a terrorist in the eyes of the FBI. Anyway, these flyers have gone out to hobby shops, to farm supply stores. Yeah, I guess stocking up on antibiotics for your chickens might also make you a terrorist. Construction sites, dive shops. Yeah, because terrorists love to spend a lot of time at the coral reef. Very effective. Martial arts, paintball. We've got, here, look at this massive packet. This is all the posters that the FBI has put out to all of these organizations to try to scare everybody into spying on each other. This is the best part of it. It's a surveillance police state now. You're supposed to be really paranoid. And look around at everybody. Is someone using cash? Oh my God, is someone hiding their screen? Is someone using an anonymizer? Turn us all into a bunch of little paranoid psycho government snitches. That's what it's all about. That reminds me of the George Carlin skit. He, I wish he could host this show. Bring George Carlin back. Let him host this show for a night. He would have something good to say about it. But in any case, this is insanity and some great comedy that Carlin would have a very fun time <laughs> with. Okay, global campaign calls for abolishment of the Constitution. This is the next piece of insanity in tonight's broadcast. Yes, the New York Times and other mainstream hoax media outlets have issued stories that say, well, the Constitution, it's all outdated, it's not adaptable, and it doesn't protect your entitlements. Oh yeah, you're entitled to vaccines, you're entitled to health care, well, death care actually, thanks to Obama. But these entitlements, they say, should be somehow in a document that's not the Constitution, therefore the Constitution is not very good. Well, you know what this is, check it out. Let me read you a line from this. This is posted on InfoWars, Kurt Nimmo and Alex Jones. The global elite will not rest, the story says, until they have revoked the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. The New York Times continued this trend with an article entitled, We the People Lose Appeal with People Around the World. Oh my, <laughs> this is such a bit of disinfo. The problem, the author states, and the author's Adam Liptak, is that, quote, rights guaranteed by the American Constitution are parsimonious by international standards. They are frozen in amber. And he says the Constitution has a, a problem, and the Declaration of Independence has a problem that the rights are not open for interpretation and cannot be changed by the government. What, what are you talking about? The government changes it and reinterprets it all the time, much to our demise. What about the, the Supreme Court case, Wickard versus Filburn, I think 1943, where the government reinterpreted the Commerce Act to mean that the federal government could tell a farmer to stop growing his own crops to feed his own chickens even though he wasn't selling that grain into interstate commerce. That's a radical reinterpretation. So the basic premise of this article by the New York Times is completely false to begin with, but even if it were true, they want to trash the Constitution and the Bill of Rights because it protects us from tyrants. Remember, it's the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth, the Fifth, the Tenth, uh, and, and many others that protect our rights against these tyrants. That's what they really want to get rid of. That's why they're really trashing the Constitution and running this total hoax that we don't need the Bill of Rights anymore. And of course, Obama agrees with that in signing the NDAA. So it's now become a pathetic collection of, well, basically, wouldn't, wouldn't you call them traitors? Aren't these acts of sedition to say that the Constitution should be abolished? I mean, we're, we're talking about outright traitors now running the press, running Washington, running the executive branch, running the legislative branch. Do you realize that every member of Congress that voted for the NDAA is an unindicted criminal? That they should be prosecuted, indicted, that they should be tried by a jury of their peers? Because we will at least give them that right that they would deny to us so that they can have a jury of their peers, even though they want to just take us, sweep us away into those dark military prisons with no due process whatsoever. 
Oh, it's too much sometimes. It really is. <sighs> Have you seen this Ron Paul dollar? By the way, this is, this is some hope. Can you get a shot of this? This is a $1 bill with Ron Paul. Here we go. Right on. Ron Paul right here on the front of it. Instead of Washington, we have Ron Paul. Yes, I'm sure the Treasury Department is going to take some interest in this. Let me, let me hold it up here. There is Mr. Paul. And on the back, check it out. You know what it says right here above the one? In gold, we trust. <laughs> That's great. Of course, it still has the all-seeing eye pyramid there as well. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't create that dollar, so you Treasury officials can leave me the hell alone. This is not my doing. All right, moving on to the teen girls who have been, a teen girl was rushed to the hospital for eating nothing but chicken nuggets for 15 years. <laughs> this was reported on Yahoo News. I thought it was a hoax at first. It turns out it's actually a true story. Uh, this girl has been told in no uncertain terms that she will die if she carries on like this. And she's quoted by CBS News as saying that she can't eat anything else. I'm at my wit's end. <laughs> I'm praying she can be helped before it's too late, says the story. Um, chicken nuggets, really? Is that all you can eat? Uh, that's mechanically separated chicken, which is some pretty gruesome stuff. Take a blender, some chicken skin, bones, and tendons, grind them all up, and mash them through a sieve, and you too have mechanically separated chicken. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not eating that. That didn't even cover what's in the dipping sauce. You know, all the high fructose corn syrup and everything else, all the chemicals in there. And look, look how is it that every nugget box has the same assortment of exact shapes? <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> and in the UK, chicken nuggets are made with a, a, a chemical ingredient that's also found in Silly Putty. Yes, indeed, that's true. All right, moving on. Got to give you some good news tonight because it can't be all bad news, right? So here's a story I selected for you. Oregano delivers. Yeah, it actually has more antioxidants than blueberries, if you can believe that. More than oranges, more than apples. This is from Natural News. Uh, oregano, a common ingredient in Italian and Mexican cuisine comes from the leaves of an herb native to the Mediterranean, and it's one of the most concentrated antioxidant sources that has ever been studied. That's great news because it means that you can use this plant, you can use the oils, there are concentrated oils from oregano offered by you know, a number of companies out there that are really, really good for you. And uh, by the way, I don't travel without oregano extract. It is the best thing for food sickness. If you're eating somewhere where you might get some food poisoning, let's say, Oh, I don't know, 15 years of eating chicken nuggets, you might not feel too good. Uh, oregano is a great way to, I mean, hey, hey, it kills E. coli in your stomach. It kills salmonella. It kills all the things that cause food poisoning. So it's, it's a wonderful emergency medicine item to have with you. Just my plug for some really good natural medicine. Moving on, the next story, the CDC now says Gardasil shots should be, quote, routine for boys. <laughs> Yeah, let's see, how does this work? Gardasil treats cervical cancer, but boys don't have a cervix. Mm. What happened to the anatomy lessons over there at the CDC? I guess they just make up anything they want now. It could be like, uh, yeah, all the boys have to be vaccinated against uh, a pumpkin lizard disease, and we have a pumpkin lizard vaccine. We're going to add that to the list of all the vaccines that you're supposed to be taking anyway. It's just pure insanity, total, total scientific hoax. Total quackery. Here's, a, here's a, a quote from the story. The fact of the matter is that Gardasil is a dangerous, unproven vaccine that has no place in medicine. And yet health officials are all too eager to recommend it to practically everyone as if it was some type of miracle treatment. That's so true. You remember that story a couple of weeks ago uh, here in Texas, in fact, when they were dropping rabies vaccines by air to vaccinate the coyotes? And, and now they're talking about having a vaccine for the skunks. So, so wait a minute, let me get this straight. Uh, it's not enough to vaccinate all the, the girls, the boys, the senior citizens, the adults, the pregnant women, now the coyotes, the skunks. What do you gotta, you gotta vaccinate the foxes, the turtles, the beetles, the worms, the insects, the bacteria? I mean, wh where does this madness end? You know, it, really, seriously, are, are vaccines the answer to everything on our planet? I mean. How would Noah have ever built his ark and gathered the animals if he had to vaccinate them all? Maybe they had vaccines back then, what, two of each kind and then an extra vaccine shot for them all as well? 
Is that, is that the way it would have worked? Well, <clears throat> don't try to argue with modern science uh, about um, Noah and that story, by the way. Moving on. HPV vaccine victims advocacy group sends an open letter to HHS Secretary Kathleen Sebelius. This open letter says, hey, wait a minute, you know, these vaccines are harming children. The adverse effects are not being accurately reported. The body count is stacking up for these poor children who are literally being maimed, killed, I mean, just murdered by these vaccines. And of course, the Department of Health and Human Services says, what, what, what? What death? What comas? What neurological disorders? What are you talking about? They don't even know. They don't even know this is going on. It's just a total cover-up of the vaccine damage that's taking place today. Anyway, this is a story by Kurt Linderman, who we're going to be interviewing later on in the show here, posted on Infowars.com on February 3rd. So check out that article on Infowars.com. Another great article also posted by Kurt Linderman Sr., who is a an activist dad whose child was injured by vaccines. This story is called Senator Rick Santorum, Presidential Hopeful on Vaccine Court Injustice. And it quotes the story of a person who approached Rick to ask about children being damaged by, by vaccines. And the response he got was basically a slap in the face where, let's see, the, uh, from the story, his answer was appalling to say the least, a slap in the face of every child and parent affected by vaccine injury. His response were woefully inadequate and reeked of political correctness and propaganda. Well, gee, really? What, you know, what do we expect? There's only one candidate that's even, even telling the truth about anything today. And, and you know his name. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Paul right here on, on, the, on the dollar bill. Oh, by the way, we do have a clip from Santorum that's related to that story. So let's go to that clip. Be right back. And in 1986, President Ronald Reagan signed the vaccine, National Vaccine Injury Compensation Act. And this Obamacare scares the heck out of me. And it's primarily because we've got a United States government right now that protects the vaccine manufacturers as opposed to the people. The vaccine court, you can actually uh, go to court. The government protects the vaccine companies, and the government represents the vaccine companies against our children. What would you do to change that? It's a decision that Congress made, but the overall public health benefit outweighs that small reaction. Your son has a reaction and has autism. Uh, I don't know if you got compensated as a result of it. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> it all depends on you know, whether what the facts and circumstances are. But there clearly are adverse health effects of vaccines. But the overall public health far outweighs those negative consequences. And therefore, the government made the policy to protect the vaccine manufacturers. Because if we didn't, they wouldn't manufacture the vaccines. And, and then, why? Because the liability for those handful of cases or more would put them out of their... Why the difference between well, there you have it, Rick Santorum parroting the lies of the vaccine industry. Every single thing he said there is a total lie, a provable lie, complete quack science. You know, the guy needs to educate himself on real vaccine science. You know, and, and I, love, I love their justification. Oh, oh, your child was injured or your child died? Well, that was a necessary sacrifice for the greater good of society because all these other children, well, their lives were saved, they say. Okay, fine, well... Where's the evidence for that, huh? Where's the scientific evidence that says this, this other group was saved? It doesn't exist. They, there has never been a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study of any vaccine that's being given to children today. Not one. The evidence does not exist. Rick Santorum, you, sir, are a liar and not even a very good one. Lying with his mouth half full and his brain half empty at the same time. I guess that does take some kind of coordination, at least. Uh, next article, Planned Parenthood. You remember the scandal with Susan Komen and, and Planned Parenthood, where first Komen was going to donate money, well, they've been donating money to Planned Parenthood for mammograms. Then they decided, well, they're going to pull those donations and not do them. And then a bunch of people got angry about that, and they said, well, wait a minute, let's change our mind again. Uh, let's donate again to Planned Parenthood because, you know, we support eugenics, abortions, mammograms, and breast cancer from all the radiation, you know, all, all in one place. Isn't that amazing? It's like a one-stop shop for just mass mayhem and death. Isn't that wonderful? It's like a drive through killing machine. <laughs> Better than fast food. Just amazing. Well, anyway, 
I wrote a story about this on Natural News. To, well, actually, I'm sorry, this wasn't my story. This is Ethan Huff's story. Uh, I assigned the story to Ethan, <laughs> sorry. But anyway, he wrote about this, and the point that he made in the story is that, look, you know, these mammograms cause breast cancer, okay? It's the radiation. Mammograms emit ionizing radiation, so they irradiate your breast and your heart and your chest area, all this tissue, and they give you breast cancer. How convenient is that for an organization that thrives on the continued existence of cancer? You know what Komen and Planned Parenthood have in common? They both take money for promoting death. And that's sad and that's sick. It's a sick chapter in human history. All right, we're going to move on to one more issue here. Dr. Benjamin Rush, yeah, he was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. He warned us about the loss of medical freedom over 200 years ago. And there's now a resurgence in interest in the so-called Rush Amendment, which is an effort to try to get our, our, our Bill of Rights, our Constitution Amendment, uh, amended to include protections of freedom of health choice and medical choice. And this is a quote from Dr. Rush. He said, Literally over 220, what was it, 200, this was in 1791, I think he said this, around that time. He said, unless we put medical freedom into the Constitution, the time will come when medicine will organize into an undercover dictatorship, sound familiar, to restrict the art of healing, sound familiar, to one class of men and deny equal privileges to others. The Constitution of the Republic should make a special privilege for medical freedoms as well as religious freedom. Now, of course, at that time, when the Bill of Rights was being negotiated many years after the original Declaration of Independence uh, was signed and after the, cons the, the regular Constitution was formed, there, there was the, a debate about the health freedom, and it was decided that there was no need to put that into the Bill of Rights because no one would ever be denied health freedom. The idea that someone would be forced to take a vaccine or, or limited to not be able to pursue natural medicine, that idea was considered totally insane. In fact, if you remember your history, the idea of the Bill of Rights was considered completely unnecessary, completely insane by most, most uh, political leaders of the time because they said, well, the federal government has no powers other than the ones that are specifically granted to it in the Constitution. Therefore, there's no need to have any kind of special protections for the people whatsoever. Wow, kind of naive to, <laughs> wasn't it? Look how badly the federal government has now usurped power and engaged in a total tyrannical takeover of our rights and destroyed both the Constitution and the Bill of Rights in the process. Well, Benjamin Rush saw this coming more than 200 years ago, sort of like a health freedom Nostradamus of his time. Interesting guy. Check out, I believe it's rush2013.com or .org is where you can find information on the Rush Amendment. So check out that online. Now, a couple more things for you today. We've got, first, the interview coming up later on with Kurt Linderman Sr., who you just heard in that video that we saw there confronting Rick Santorum about vaccines. We've also got a daily quote. I'm going to show you that right now. This is from Woody Guthrie. He says, yeah, yes, as through this world I've wandered, I've seen lots of funny men. Some will rob you with a six gun and some with a fountain pen. And uh, it certainly is relevant today when our money is being stolen by white collar criminals in Wall Street. Our rights are being stripped away by white collar legislative criminals in Congress. <laughs> and oh, do I even dare talk about the, DS, the TSA on air and what they're stripping away from us? Mm. Nah, let's just show you the, the animation instead. This is an animation I put together. I actually did the voiceover for this and then worked with an animator to put together this little three-minute TSA animation that satirizes the complete tyrannical actions, the total violations of our Fourth Amendment rights taking place every single day by the TSA in airports across America. A warning, this video is not suitable for children, it's somewhat graphic, but it's all based on truth and reality that's happening today in America. And by the way, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, coming up this Saturday, February 11th, you can catch me live. I'm giving a speech at the Self-Reliance Expo. Just check that out at selfrelianceexpo.com. It's a keynote speech about survival and nutrition, and yes, I will be there in person, and I want to invite all the Texas CHL holders to come and bring your firearms legally, of course. 
just in case something goes goes crazy there. Uh, I appreciate your protection. Uh, need your protection to get out in public and give these speeches because you never know what kind of crazies are being set up out there to go after those of us who spread the word about truth, freedom, and liberty. Anyway, catch me there at Self Reliance Expo this Saturday, February 11th. Now let's check out this TSA animation video that I hinted at earlier. I think you'll find it very funny and maybe not enlightening, but definitely hilarious. Let's check it out. Help wanted. The TSA needs your help to protect America's national security. As a lightly trained TSA officer, you'll get a plastic badge. Oh yeah, you rock. But that's not all. No education needed. No IQ too low. Not even yours. And as a federal TSA officer, you get to harass everyone around you, just like you did in high school. Yo, check this out. You also get to feel some genitals. No, not your own. Other people's genitals. Plus, you're fully authorized by Janet Napolitano. <laughs> Undress innocent travelers where there are no security cameras and no limits to your awesome power. Your work environment is always comfortably warm thanks to the ionizing radiation being constantly emitted by x-ray machines and naked body scanners. But don't worry, even if you do get cancer, we've got government health care for you for all the psychiatric drugs that turn you into a complete psychopathic criminal. <laughs> That's even more awesome. Hey, power tripping perv, do you enjoy undressing little boys and girls like a bitch? Safe football coach. Do you like to detain U.S. Senators? Do you appreciate portable electronics that slide easily into your pocket? Have you ever wanted to see what's really hiding in Grimball's diapers? Well, now's your chance, pervert scum. Join the TSA and we'll give you a badge, a uniform, and an ego trip the size of the federal budget deficit. <laughs> Plus, you'll get a paycheck denominated in fiat currency Federal Reserve notes. Oh, yeah. In the TSA, you'll be working alongside 65,000 other fine men and women and perverts who represent the security elite. The last line of desperate defense against terrorists that are hiding everywhere. We think they might even be hiding in your underwear. So turn off the Xbox and put down those glazed donuts and stop masturbating to internet porn. Experience real life porn with the naked body scanners only at the TSA. That's right, get out of your parents' basement and join the elite. Your country needs your help to destroy the Bill of Rights and secure our freedom one scrotum at a time. Apply now, you pathetic loser. At TSA. <laughs> Greetings, fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here announcing the first of many trips that I'm going to take across this wonderful United States that we live in. And we get so busy here at InfoWars.com, the nightly news, the daily radio show, the documentary films, and all the other things we're doing that I tend to never go out and give speeches anymore. And I've got a lot of ideas bubbling around in my head about the history of the New World Order, what makes them tick and how to defeat them. So I'm titling this key speech I'm going to give. It'll run around two hours long, Blueprint to Defeat the New World Order. And we're also going to have a surprise premiere of a short documentary film we've been working on at the event. First off, I'm going to be going to Dallas, Texas, Sunday, February 19th, 2012, to the historic Lakewood Theater. And the next Sunday, February 26th, I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida. You can find out more about the events and buy tickets at InfoWars.com forward slash events. Now, unfortunately, every event I've ever had, we've had to turn people away. So get your tickets early at InfoWars.com forward slash events. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this world. The craziest of all is this explosive awakening. I can't wait to meet you and shake your hand. I'll see you in Dallas and I'll see you in Orlando. 
infowars.com forward slash events. And coming up next on InfoWars Nightly News, an interview with Kurt Linderman Sr. He's a father of a vaccine-injured child. He became an activist six years ago to help spread the word about the truth of how vaccines are harming, maiming, and sometimes even killing innocent children. He's here to talk with us today to help spread the word. His website is viralsepidemic.com, and he joins us by video Skype. Kurt, thank you for joining us today on InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for having me, Mike. What is the most important element of your message that you think people need to start off with understanding? I mean, what, what possibly, you know, how did you get into this position? What is motivating you today? Well, vaccine injured child, that's how I got into, uh, ac actually into being an advocate, a, an opponent of vaccines. I think the biggest issue right now that all of us are dealing with is the science is still not in. And if, if those pro proponents of vaccines really want to say the science is in, then I would say the science is uh, balanced in our favor. Yeah, it's very interesting that you point that out because when anyone starts to really look at the science, the so-called safety and efficacy studies of vaccines, they find that vaccines really aren't safe. In fact, it is the abandonment of science that leads these doctors to say it's safe because the evidence doesn't really support that belief. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you, you see some of these blogs uh, calling us the anti-vaccine pseudoscience uh, whack jobs and everything. It's the furthest thing from the truth. We're the ones looking at the science. We see the science. And I mean, it, it's just blatantly out there. But yet it seems like whenever one of us starts talking about it, we all of a sudden become the conspiracy theorists and, and the, the weirdos. And the science is right there in front of us. For all of us to read, most of us are just either too lazy or too dumbed down to really want to pay, take the time to look at the science. We'd rather just look at the white coat and say, I trust them. Well, I, I would characterize you as a compassionate parent. I mean, that's, you know, every parent's job is to observe their child and try to discover what is helping them or what is harming them. Can you describe what you observed when your child went from being, let's say, normal, healthy child to being vaccine injured? Well, we, we took our son in for uh, when he was 20 months old to get caught up on some vaccines because he'd had some uh, ear, uh, ear infections and the doctor didn't want to uh, vaccinate while he was ill. And he got uh, six vaccines, a total of, well, a total, six shots, a total of nine vaccines uh, with the combinations in one day. And immediately he took a turn for the worse. It, it was absolutely within a couple of hours. What I mean, what exactly, if, if you don't mind me asking, I'm, I'm trying to be sensitive. I know this is a difficult uh, chapter in your family's history, but can you describe for the benefit of the viewers exactly what you ob observed in those hours? Well, uh, fever and then uh, the damage to the gut, which, uh, which portrayed itself as uh, four and a half years of diarrhea, explosive diarrhea, um, loss of all of his language. Uh, you could just see that the, the little guy was in incredible pain all the time. Uh, the, just the, nor the typical signs that tens of thousands of parents talk about on a daily basis, uh, what's going on with vaccine injured children. Uh, just, just really, uh, you could just tell that he was in a lot of pain, loss of muscle tone, pale, the boy couldn't get a tan if he was out in the sun for, uh, you know, for, for six hours, which has a lot to do with the yeast that was built up in his gut because his, uh, his gut was destroyed. Um, all the good gut flora was destroyed. So uh, right. you know, just the, the typical signs. Now, at, at that time, Kurt, and, and by the way, I want to remind our viewers that you have articles posted on Infowars.com, a lot of good information there where people can learn more. But... Uh, at the time that this first happened, Kurt, were you, did you have any awareness at all that vaccines could be dangerous or even deadly to a child? No. In fact, that's the, the primary impetus to what I do today. Uh, we were the quintessential dumbed down uh, mom and dad that took our son in and said, if the doctor says that uh, he needs them, we're going to do it. So um, my main impetus now is to make sure that the information gets out there Parents can educate themselves, do what they want to do. But if I'd have just had one person say, hey, did, do you know there's mercury in those vaccines? 
Do you know that a lot of people are saying that their children are getting really sick? I would have looked into it. And even back in, you know, 2001, 2002, there was enough information on the Internet where had I been directed, you know, led in that direction, I don't think I would have vaccinated my son. So every single person I talked to, you know, they could take it for what it is. They can educate themselves. I just plant that seed. We don't need any more members uh, in this group. One in 67 children have uh, um, autism, and not to mention all of the other uh, ailments out there caused by the vaccines. Um, we just plant the seed and then let the parents make their own decision. Do you find it oddly uh, sad, Kurt, that the CDC creates these hoax pandemics you know, bird flu, swine flu, and they market these as deadly diseases and they, and they pretend that they're killing millions of people. Meanwhile, the real epidemic, the real pandemic, is the vaccine-caused adverse events, the vaccine harm. And, and that pandemic goes completely unacknowledged by the CDC and by most conventional doctors. I mean, how, being in your shoes right now, how, what goes through your mind when you, when you think about how much they've twisted this around? Well, I wouldn't call it funny or weird. I'd call it diabolical. Absolutely. And uh, diabolical and intentional. There's no doubt about it. Um, I, I honestly believe it's it's all, you know, money and population control. Um, by the CDC's own standards, when you look at the, uh, uh, more, the MMWR, uh, Morbidity Mortality Weekly Report, uh, a year before the measles vaccine came on the market, measles had been eradicated by 98%, but you'll still see uh, Sibelius, you'll still see Margaret Hamburg, you'll still see the doctors out there like, uh, you know, well, all of the doctors really that are proponents of vaccines talk about how vac the vaccine, you know, just eradicated measles. That's, that's totally false. And by the, the CDC's own standards is false by their own paperwork, but yet they get away with it consistently. Yeah, yeah, well said. And, and let me direct the viewer's attention to this. You posted a, an article on Infowars.com. The HPV Vaccine Victims Advocacy Group sends an open letter to HHS Secretary Sebelius, and that letter goes on to describe the adverse uh, events and how many children are harmed by it. But, but all of these so-called authorities in government, they ignore the people, they ignore the damage. They tell you basically that you're insane for even trying to connect the actual causes of the damage that you very clearly see right in front of your own eyes in your own home. And yet, in reality, it's these, it's these officials who are truly insane. I mean, diabolical, as you say. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, this whole Gardasil issue is incredibly frightening to me. And I think it's a, it's a step up. Uh, they're they're ramping up the population control. I honestly believe that that kids that are getting the uh, Gardasil vaccine now, now boys as well. But let's talk about the young ladies out there and the little girls that are getting this shot. I believe we're going to see a massive, uh, on a massive scale, we're going to see infertility. I honestly, honestly believe that. And when we look at the fact that the same thing that just recently happened with the rotavirus vaccine, finding uh, disease DNA in the vaccine, we're seeing it now in the uh, in the Gardasil vaccine and the Cervarix vaccine. And before we, we sent the letter to Margaret Hamburg, the director of, uh, of uh, the FDA, sh telling her that out of out of the 13 samples that were tested, all 13 came back with this DNA in it, right. the HPV DNA, uh, no mention of it. Now, after this letter, all of a sudden, Margaret Hamburg and the FDA comes out with, oh, yeah, we always knew it was in there. It's no problem. Well, now we've got doctors, doctors like uh, uh, Dr. Hannon uh, Polanski that's saying, wait a minute, I've got the proof. This foreign DNA, this HPV DNA is going to cause disease. But yet the doctors are saying, you know, the, the CDC and the FDA are all saying, ah, oh, it's no big deal. We knew it was in there. We just didn't tell anybody. Well, that, it's, it's criminal what's going on. It's absolutely criminal. I mean, you, you look at what really goes into these vaccines. We are talking about the ground up viral fragments from pus filled wounds of diseased dying animals from across all kinds of different species added to a mixture of aluminum, which is a brain poison, mercury, which is a brain poison, polysorbate 80, uh, formaldehyde, which is a neurological poison. And then they say, what, we can inject this into children and have no adverse effects? It's, it, go, it, it flies in the face of not just science, 
but of but of just total common sense, natural law. It's 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 truly unbelievable. I want to. Do you have a comment on that? Go ahead. Well, yeah. Uh, one of the things is don't forget also that polysorbate 80 is also a carcinogen and causes infertility. Something to think about there. <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, that's a, that's a whole nother agenda to this. It's not just culling the current population, but making sure that people can't have babies. But first, let me ask you this, Kurt, on your website, viralsepidemic.com, uh, what can people find there? Uh, we want to put that up on the screen. Yeah, there we go. What, uh, w what's offered there, Kurt? Well, I've got original articles that I write, uh, some of them uh, also written for uh, Alex Jones uh, Infowar. Dot com, um, but I've also got a lot of other articles on there. Um, I'm going to be having a YouTube channel that goes along with it. I do have a YouTube channel now, CLSR4444, that has a lot of those videos on it, a lot of presentations that I've given. Um, but the one article that I really wish everybody would look at is one that I just wrote called uh, Our Little AIDS Patients. And it's talking about um, our kids, the, the autistic kids, uh, what, what people call autistic, I call vaccine injured, and how their immune systems are destroyed. They're sick because of their immune systems. It's an immunological disorder. It's not a psychiatric disorder. Right. And, and these vaccines are what's causing this ailment and it really is when you look at it 10 years ago we never heard of primary immunodeficiency it's simply kids that the vaccines have com completely screwed up their immune systems without actually getting the the whole uh, the autism traits but they had to come up with a name of it for well, it. they, they love to play destroyed them they play, the government plays these games with these names and labels it's just like the TSA strip searches your grandma and says we don't call it strip searching well, you know, the vaccines cause autism in your child, but they don't call it a vaccine injury. They call it a, you know, a mysterious whatever. I mean, these 12 girls or so in Brooklyn, school girls, who are suffering these symptoms of obvious chemical toxicity, they have, they have neurological damage. You know, the doctors are saying, well, it's mass hysteria. All these girls are just making it up. I mean, they, these people are living in fantasy land, you know, like quack land, where they totally ignore all reality. And yet we're the believers in pseudoscience. It, it, it's, it's, it's like a, a, another world that they're living in. It's sick. They're, yeah, well, they're demonic. I mean, they're diabolical, as, as you say. I, I think there's, there is a, there's an evil element to this. Let, let's get into that. You mentioned the population control agenda. Do you literally believe now, after experiencing this and doing your own research, that vaccines are being used to reduce global population? There's no doubt about it, and one of the biggest proponents of of, uh, of vaccines and and uh, population control is Bill Gates. All you have to do is hear it from the demon's mouth. He talks about it. Uh, it it's absolutely amazing uh, that he gets away with what he says. But then the, you know the media is just going to bow down to him anyways. Well, I thought I thought he was just such a wonderful, caring individual who wants to uh, save the planet through genetic engineering chemtrails. And, and vaccine death. I mean, what, what could be wrong with being a merchant of death from the technology industry? I, obviously I'm being you know, facetious, but, but the, the, the media does make him look out to be this wonderful angel that's just bringing us life, when in fact he's delivering death. Oh, there's, there's no doubt about it. The man wants to control the population. He's one of the elitists out there. The problem is we have all of these doctors and politicians that really think they're hearing from the, you know, the truth from these scientists, and they have no idea that they're victims as well. It's going to be a very small group of people that are actually going to make it through their agenda. And these doctors, these police officers, these uh, health department officials, they think they're on the right side and they're being harmed just right along with the rest of us. Well, you know, that's something that Alex talks about all the time. All these people who think they're going along with the global elite, they're going to be the first victims. They don't want you around any more than the people they're, they're targeting. I mean, you're just another cog in the machine who's going to be crushed into total death as soon as your uh, service to the, to the elite is over with. I mean, you're absolutely right about that, Kurt. Yeah, I mean, make no mistake. Uh, this is about population control, the money being made from all of the, the ailments that are being uh, brought on by these vaccines, the money being made by the pharmaceutical companies to, uh, to treat these. That's just a, a, a great byproduct of, of, you know, 
the ultimate agenda, which is population control. You know, I used to say all the time, even before my my child got damaged, you look at, at the uh, the drug culture, especially with this methamphetamines, and, and I always used to say, wow, you take all of those poisons, you put them together, and you inject them, and you snort them up your nose, you got to be crazy. And now I look at it like, Wow, they took all of these poisons and toxins and put them into this vial and then are injecting them into my child. And I didn't find that crazy. Yeah, plus, plus maybe 40 different strains of cancer viruses that they also have in the vaccines that has now been openly publicly admitted to. But again, if you even talk about that, all, all of a sudden you're a conspiracy theorist because you're quoting scientific history, you know, from the history books. I mean, that. That's the thing about this that's, that's just incredible. Now this is all coming out, more and more people are watching, but we're still called conspiracy theorists when we're actually quoting the evidence that's out there. It's incredible. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, Mike, uh, about a year and a half or two years ago, when the whole rotavirus thing came out, uh, the, the uh, GlaxoSmithKline rotavirus vaccine, they came out and said, oh my gosh, we've got this, uh, <clears throat> this PCV1 virus in it. It's a porcine circovirus. And we we need to do something about it. Well, then then um, the Merck came out and said, well, hey, come over to this vaccine that we made for rotavirus, and but Paul Offit's vaccine, by the way, uh, we're all fine and good. Then they find out that not only did their vaccine have the PCV1, but also had the PCV2. Now, porcine circovirus causes wasting disease and death in young piglets. Now, when you see a lot of our kids with their immune system dysfunctions, what do you see? They're wasting away and dying. Yeah, but and that's, that's I, what they want, though. I mean, they, that's it, right. they, they've become total merchants of death. This, this has become a eugenics agenda, and, and it's clear that all of you watching, if you don't want to be part of the depopulation agenda, you need to get informed. Uh, Kurt, what is, you know, you're a dad. Can you speak to the dads who are watching this? What is the most important message that you can leave them with as we wrap up this segment? What do they need to remember? Remember that these doctors don't know any more than you do if you educate yourself. As I was saying, I'm sitting there listening to the FDA meeting on this rotavirus vaccine. And I'm listening to it on the web live, and these doctors are laughing and joking and having a grand old time. And ultimately, they said, we have no idea what this PCV1 virus and PCV2 virus are gonna, is going to do to our children. But they said, we're going to keep on doing it because we've already done it to millions of kids. Right. That's right. who you're believing. Stop believing it. Educate yourself. That's all I can say. Well, well said, Kurt Linderman Sr. Thank you for joining us tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. Absolutely, Mike. All right, there you go. The interview with Kurt Linderman, senior from viralsepidemic.com, a very brave, courageous, and highly motivated father who wants to help you save your children from the same effects that his children have experienced. Sadly, you know, we're going to win this, this fight against the vaccine industry, let me tell you, because the word is getting out. Thanks to support of people like you, and thanks to this network, InfoWars, and Alex Jones, and all the crew here who are doing such an amazing job to get this word out. We're going to be victorious against these criminals who are pushing these vaccines and killing our kids. And I'm sick of it. You know, I'm just tired of it. That's, that's, that's why I'm here, and I know that's why you're here. Share this video. Get, get the word out. Let people know they got to protect their kids from these total criminals who are just trying to mass murder everybody. It's... It's beyond insane. It's truly diabolical. In any case, I want to leave you on a good note. Just want to thank you for watching InfoWars Nightly News tonight. I want to thank Alex for having me on as a guest. I always enjoy filling in. I want to thank the crew for their outstanding job. And please, folks, stay tuned to InfoWars.com every day and listen to the daily radio show at PrisonPlanet.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Uh, thanks for joining me today. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, signing off for InfoWars Nightly News. Take care.